I'm Paula Esplatz. I'm associate professor at the Department of Neuroscience and also affiliated with the UC San Diego Alzheimer's Disease Research Center. And I'm here today to talk about CKD disruption in Alzheimer's disease and a clinical study we are soon to get started with time-restricted eating in Alzheimer's. So um, as we age, many of the systems in our bodies start not to function properly. And what of all of those systems is the circadian or biological clock, which is a system that synchronizes our bodies to our environment and mostly senses the input of the light to understand whether it's day or night and synchronize many of our functions, including sleep, our readiness to move, to perform cognitive tasks, or even to absorb nutrients. And as you can imagine, being involved in so many physiological uh, aspects, desynchronization or alterations in this clock has a major impact in health. Unfortunately, up to 80% of Alzheimer's patients suffer a strong disruption in the circadian rhythmicity. And the way it is manifested clinically is by a alteration in a sleep that is perceived as a lot of sleepness during the day and long naps, but being awake or agitated during the night. And another common circadian alteration in terms of behavior is what we call sundowning, that is this increased agitation and confusion or disorientation the patients have during the evening, even when they have a relatively good day. And as you imagine and know, this not only affects the patient's um, life, but also has a very big toll on caregivers. And importantly, is a major factor of nursing home placement. So my lab is interested in understanding what are the mechanisms that drive this dysfunction. And we work in the very molecular level in the brain, trying to see how genes express and how these circuits are interconnected. So we use animal models of disease, and we recently found that many of these genes that have a certain time of the day for their expression, meaning they are coordinated by the circadian clock, are altered during Alzheimer's in our models. And um, this also alters the cognitive functions of the animals too. But I mentioned in the beginning that the circadian clock synchronizes with the environment. So it's able to be manipulated and connects with our environment, which is a very interesting factor since we can try to fix or synchronize or entrain the clock by doing some changes in our environment and behavior. And beyond the light input, the feeding time is a very strong regulator of the clock. So we use this idea in our animals and what we did, it's restricting the time where they are allowed to eat. So we, instead of giving the food the, the entire time, we put the food for certain hours and then remove the feeder. The animals quickly adapt, they don't consume less calories and they didn't even lose weight, but this moment of knowing when they will get the, to eat created a very strong stimulus for the brain to synchronize itself. And indeed, after three months in treatment, we, have, we found that those genes that have these patterns of daily expression normalize in the animals that were treated, but also some pathological markers decrease. There was fewer inflammation and there was less accumulation of plaques. And most importantly, we also found these animals sleep better, sleep more, they are less agitated, and they recover some cognitive functions as they really remember better where the treat was in the maze and perform much better. So these are very exciting results, but they are conducted in animal models. So now we really want to understand whether there is benefit and a possibility of using this strategy of timing when we eat and what benefits can have for the Alzheimer's patients. So we are starting this study that we call THREAD for time-restricted eating in Alzheimer's disease. And we are recruiting patients 65 years and above and uh, that are already clinically diagnosed with mild cognitive impairment or early or moderate Alzheimer's disease. And the intervention is quite simple. It will require four visits. In the first will be a screening visit when we will explain the study, we'll ask questions about your habits and, and other clinical questions, determine if you are eligible, and then sign the consent. And then will be three visits in which we will perform a cognitive testing using a questionnaire, 
and draw a little sample of blood to measure a lot of metabolic and aging and pathological markers. And the other component is we're in a smart watch that we will provide, and that will let us quantify and measure when and how much you move, but also how much you sleep. And that those are two important outputs of the circadian clock. And the other component, it's timing when you eat. So um, you can either use an app in the phone, just tapping when you start or stop eating. And if you are not comfortable with phones, we can provide a notebook. You can just log when you start and when you end eating. And the study can uh, take six or 12 months. So the visits are in the um, starting point of baseline. Then you can six months and 12 months. And we will measure all these parameters that you will have the results as well. So um, we hope to see some improvements and advantages. And there is another very special opportunity in this study. We will have an opportunity for a group of what we call dyads. And this is that 20 MCI or Alzheimer's patients can be enrolled with their healthy caregivers or living partners. So if the healthy living partner is interested in actively doing this fasting, they can participate in the study. And we want to understand two things with this group of people. First, if, if it's this making easy to really continue doing the fasting when you have another person in your household doing the same schedule of feeding. And the other question is whether healthy older adults can get any benefits from this different way of eating, trying to improve the circadian alignment. So uh, we are very, um, we will also support you all the way receiving um, phone calls from our coordinators that will discuss if you have any issues, logging your food or fasting, or if you notice any other secondary effect that we don't expect, um, really to support all the way. Um, it's very important that the intervention really emphasizes the alignment of the circadian cycle. So the fasting happens during the night. So again, it's nothing disrupted. It's not skipping meals or eating in a very specific way. So we are very grateful for this collaboration with the Shiley Marcus Alzheimer's Disease Center, and we hope to hear from you and to get your participation. Thank you.